Hello there, welcome to David's Investment Analysis channel. Thank you to those who've been supporting me by subscribing or watching my videos. I'm reaching close to 1,000 subscribers and I'm super excited. Today I'm very excited to be talking about another special purpose acquisition company. And this time is Graph Industrial Corp, which is planning to merge with Velodyne LiDAR. Upon closing the transaction expecting in Q3 2020, the combined company will maintain its name as Velodyne LiDAR and change its ticker symbol from GRAF Graph to VLDR and will be traded on the New York Stock Exchange. Following the announcement on July 2nd, the stock price went from $13.85 to $20.53, and that's a 48% jump in one day. In the next bit, I'll be discussing about Validine, what they do, and how they earn income. Then I'll look at the qualitative aspects of the business and follow up with a quantitative analysis looking at the valuation and financials of the business. Then I'll conclude on whether I think the stock is a buy at its current price and whether I own any shares of the business myself. I spent a lot of time preparing for these videos, so I really appreciate if you could share, like, and subscribe. And if there's any other company you would like me to cover in the future, please leave in the comments below. Now let's get to it. Validine Lighter is a leading lighter technology company. For those that do not know what lighter is, it stands for light detection and ranging or sometimes called laser scanning or 3D scanning. The technology uses iSafe laser beams to create a 3D representation of the surveyed environment. How it works is a LiDAR sensor will emit light waves into the surrounding environment, and these light waves bounce off surrounding objects and returns it to the sensors. And the sensor uses the time it took for each wave to return to the sensor to calculate and detect the distance of the objects. Validine's LiDAR technology is used in autonomous vehicles, advanced driver assistance systems, delivery, mapping, robotics and industrial, shuttles, and smart city. Now let's look at some of the qualitative factors and we'll first look at the management team. David Hall is the founder and executive chairman at Validine. He invented 3D LiDAR to give autonomous vehicles real-time 360 degrees vision. He continues to serve as visionary inventor whose technologies are enabling safe autonomous mobility. He will continue to be very involved in the business and will be the visionary at Validine. Dr. Anand Gopalan is the Chief Executive Officer with experience in building and leading worldwide engineering organizations and managing organizations through business model transitions. Prior to succeeding as the CEO, he was Validine's CTO and prior to that he was the VP of Engineering at Rambus, where he saw the chip and IP development activities for memory and interface division. Dr. Gopalan received his PhD in Electrical Engineering and Microsystems Engineering from Rochester Institute of Technology. The management team appears to be strong with a visionary inventor and a very educated and experienced CEO. I will continue to trust the management team leading this company until red flag is detected. Now let's look at the industry outlook. A couple of reports both suggest that compound annual growth rate for LiDAR market is approximately 20%. First one from market to markets, it suggests that here that the market is predicted to reach 2.8 billion by 2025 from an estimated of 1.1 billion USD in 2020 representing a compound annual growth rate of 20.7%. The growth is mainly driven by the adoption of LiDAR systems in unmanned aerial vehicles, increasing adoption of LiDAR in engineering and construction applications, use of LiDAR in geographic information system applications, the emergence of 4D LiDAR and easy of regulations related to the use of commercial drones in different applications. North America is expected to dominate the LiDAR market by region. The growth is attributed to the use of LiDAR applications such as environment, corridor mapping, meteorology, and urban planning. In addition, the use of LiDAR in advanced driving assistance systems and driverless cars also is expected to contribute to the growth. Another report by Ali Market Research, it suggests that the global LiDAR market is expected to grow from 700 million in 2019 to 2.9 billion by 2027, with a compound annual growth rate of 20.1% between 2020 and 2027. Per report, the main driver of growth is the improved automated processing ability of LiDAR system in terms of image resolution and data processing capabilities over other technologies. Interestingly, this report suggests that the highest growth is expected in the Asia-Pacific region with a compound annual growth rate of 22% between 2020 and 2027. This right here shows the mass opportunity for Validine, 165 projects tracked by the company for the usage of LiDAR. This represents a $6 billion opportunity across these projects. There is a possibility that some of these projects would be converted into wind contracts for Validine. We can see here Validine had only one signed contract in Jan 1st, 2019, and by Jan 2020 it had three, and by June it had 16 signed contracts. And we can see here that there is still a big opportunity for Validine to continue to win contracts. 
Let's look at some of the interesting facts about Validine. Validine is the first one to develop the first 3D LiDAR system in 2005 by founder David Hall and was in production in 2007. And not only that, they have been improving this technology from what it was a large piece of equipment to now the size of a handheld device. They have been a market leader and dominated the market for 13 years, offering a broad range of products that lead to cumulative sales of over 570 million. They have over 300 customers, including major OEMs and leading tech companies, and is backed by industry leaders, strategic investors that include Ford, Baidu, Nikon, and Hyundai. What you see here is the timeline of Validine's business, from its inventions to products to partnering up with strategic investors. Not only that, the management is projecting over $680 million in revenue in 2024, and approximately 50% of this had been contracted already. They are currently have 16 signed multi-year contracts that will drive the revenues these coming years. Validine's vision is further enhanced by adding high-margin software subscriptions that will increase revenues and profitability. The software solutions power the lighter products designed for automotive, advanced driving assistance systems applications. They are currently working with several OEMs to deploy these solutions into their systems. There are some key investments that give a clear line of expanding margins, which include technology miniaturization, proprietary manufacturing IP, manufacturing partnerships, and overseas production. They have the capacity to address growing demand with manufacturing facility in the US, Japan, and Thailand. The LiDAR market today is very different than it was three years ago. It used to be very expensive at about 75,000 per unit and not very reliable and had limited use. But today it's very affordable, ranging between a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars in many forms of factors and has the durability of over 10 plus years in very harsh environments. And LiDAR serves in many industries and applications. Valdine's business has been a very sticky customer base because of its technology differentiation, lengthy and rigorous validation process, long-term contracted volume arrangements, and high switching costs. This also creates a high barrier to entry for startups and competitors. Valdine has five competitive modes that would assist it to grow its business and at the same time defend its business from other competitors, which include 1. Entrenched customer relationships because of investments by both parties, 2. Driving ASP reductions that will lead to higher margins and scale. 3. Defendable IP portfolio that would create barrier to entry. 4. Diverse product portfolio to be able to cater to a diverse set of customers. and 5. Access to capital through the merger that would allow Validine to have a well-capitalized balance sheet and opportunity to drive selective industry consolidation. One of the risks relates to the transaction. The transaction is not yet finalized. The transaction won't be closed until sometime in the third quarter of 2020 and the deal would require shareholder approval and subject to several closing conditions. And some deals do fall apart, and if this deal falls apart, the stock price will go back to $10. Some of the other risks. Global health issue may impact both manufacturers and end users of LiDAR technology. Manufacturers may see a supply chain disruptions from closures and lockdowns, and possibly of lower demand for exploration and application of LiDAR in oil and gas and mining industries. There's another risk that companies may be unaware of the technology and benefits of LiDAR systems, or the perception that the systems are very expensive and very limited use and not very durable. Also for autonomous driving vehicles, they can use vision software and radar instead of LiDAR. An example is Tesla, where they use their software that uses machine learning and that identifies objects and radar, which uses radar frequencies to detect the distance of objects for their autonomous vehicles. Now let's look at the quantitative analysis. What you see here is the revenues coming from the Sign 16 contracts as of June 1st, 2020 and the total projected revenue for each year to 2024. What's also important and very encouraging here is that there were only three contracts at the beginning of the year, and within only five months, it grew to 16 contracts. That's more than five times the number of contracts at the beginning of the year. Management were tracking 130 contracts at the beginning of the year, but now is tracking 165. And as time continues to move forward, this number will continue to grow and may lead to an increased signed and awarded deals. Management believes that it is reasonable to expect by end of 2021 to have 50 signed contracts. It is important to note that there is a difference between the revenue from the signed contract and the projected revenue. As mentioned previously, approximately 50% of the projected revenue has been contracted. However, management expects to reach the projection based on the pipeline available. Management expects that the compound annual growth rate is approximately 60% into 2024, driven by product mix and rolling off new products and software. The result of growing revenues and gross margins and lowering costs of, as a percentage of revenue will lead to growing EBITDA and cash flow. With the expectation of almost 150 million EBITDA and 103 million free cash flow at the end of 2024. Per conference call, management does not expect to raise more capital as management expects to be cash flow positive in the near term. To achieve positive EBITDA and cash flow, there are three key areas where management would be focused on. First is R&D. 
Management plans to continue to increase the investment in R&D, but will be a lower percentage of revenue as revenue continues to grow. This is positive as their systems are technology driven and continue to invest in R&D allows them to continue to be the market leader. Similar with sales and marketing and general administrative and expense, it is expected to grow but decrease as a percentage of revenue. Now let's look at the performance valuation of the merger deal. The performance enterprise value of the company is at 1.6 billion based on 2.3 times EV to 2024 estimated revenue. With a cash available of 200 million, the performance equity value of the company is 1.8 billion. They have a secured 150 million in pipe commitment plus 170 million in cash from the SPAC, less 50 million to validate shareholders that are neither leadership or strategic investors, less 25 million in estimated transaction fees would provide 192 million to the balance sheet of the combined company. The combined company will have a robust balance sheet with minimal debt. Existing Validine shareholders will be rolling over most of their equity into this transaction, subject to a six-month lockup post-closing. Validine's owners and SPAC founders were granted an earnout that will trigger if the shares of the combined company trades at above $15 per share for 20 out of the 30 trading days at any time before six months following the completion of the transaction. Operational benchmark compared to management identify comparable companies. We can see here that they have the highest expected growth rate with an average or slightly below average gross profit and EBITDA margin. And now looking at the valuation compared to management identify comparable companies, we can see that Valdine trades at a cheap valuation compared to its competitors based on the performer valuation. However, the stock has increased a lot since the announcement of the transaction. We'll have to take a look at the updated number later compared to the competitor's valuation. What we see here is management's valuation of the company by applying 5 times to 9 times multiple to Validine's estimated 2024 sales, and then discounting it back 3 years to today and apply sensitivity getting a range between 2 billion and 3.6 billion valuation. The lower end 2 billion valuation is similar to Validine's previous round of B and B1 financing, which valued the company between 1.9 billion to 2 billion. Now let's look at the current valuation. The shares close at $20.53. With a performa of 172.3 million shares, the company would be valued at 3.5 billion, which is near the high end of the management's valuation. If we look at the low end of management's valuation of 2 billion, this suggests that the share price would trade at $11.61, which is a 76.9% downwards from here where it's today. With the high end of management's valuation at 3.6 billion, the share price would trade at $20.89, which suggests an upside of 1.7%. But if we use the industry average of the price to estimated 2024 sales of 7, the stock price would trade at $27.95, suggesting an upside of 26.5%. And if we use the industry average for enterprise value to 2024 estimated EBITDA of 33.65, the stock price would trade at $29.06, suggesting a 29.3% upside. Since there is time before the merger closes, one should apply a reasonable margin of safety on these valuations. Conclusion in my opinion, at today's price of $20.53, I think it is a speculative buy because of the following reasons. They have a strong management team led by David Hall, who is a serial inventor that invented the 3D LiDAR technology that give autonomous vehicles real-time 360 degrees vision. Valdar has been able to grow very rapidly, growing faster than industry, which suggests that the company has been taking market share. And their projections suggest that they will continue to outgrow the industry by a large degree. Valdine is currently tracking 165 projects that will use LiDAR technology, and 16 contracts have been signed already, and as time progresses, these numbers will continue to increase. Valdine is backed by large strategic investors like Ford, Baidu, Nikon, and Hyundai. Valdine has a very sticky customer base because the customers spend millions and years in developing solutions around Valdine's technology, and most of the time have long-term contracts. Valdine's technology, products, and manufacturing methods are protected by their comprehensive global patent portfolio. Valdine has a very broad range of product offerings for several industries that are low cost from hundreds to thousands of dollars, and that are durable and can last over 10 years in harsh environments. Valdine is currently trading at reasonable valuations compared to its competitor. Valdine currently trades at 5.17 times estimated 2024 sales, meanwhile the industry trades at a 7.04 multiple. Some of my concerns include the following. The global health issue may impact supply chains and lower demands in certain industries like the oil and gas exploration. The growth potential does look very promising, but remind you that these are only projections and the reality can be very different. Some industries and companies may be unaware of the technology and the benefits of the LiDAR technology or believe that it's very expensive and have limited use and it's not durable. Also, there may be other alternatives to LiDAR as solutions, like Tesla using vision and radar and autonomous driving as opposed to LiDAR. 
Despite the reasonable valuation, if the deal does fall apart, the shares would go back to $10 per share. The transaction is still subject to shareholder approval and closing conditions. Disclosure. I personally do not own any shares of Kraft, but I do intend on buying some shares in the future. I'm not sure when, but hopefully to get a little bit lower from here. Congratulations to those that were able to get in at a good price. I do think the company is a great company with amazing products that will continue to grow into the future. That's it for now. I've spent a lot of time preparing for these videos. So I really appreciate if you could like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Until then, see you next time.